we finally now know the identity of the Yellow King. The King in Yellow. He's been known as many names, but it's the King in Yellow, the Yellow King, which he goes by. And I personally think that this is probably one of the biggest things to happen since Rabuti's return in the Warhammer 40,000 storyline. Maybe even bigger than that. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what the hell is a Yellow King? What is a King in Yellow? Have you gone mad, Valrak? No, I haven't. This is all in relation to the books that Dan Abner has been writing now for the past, what's it, 20 plus years. The Eisenhorn books, the Ravenna books, the Beckwin books. So before we jump in and we reveal his identity and all the things that bloody go along with that, because I'm sure this is going to set up a huge storyline in the future, I just want to put out a huge, big, fat, juicy spoiler warning on this video. I'm going to be talking about the Eisenhorn story. I'm going to be talking about the Ravenous story. I'm especially going to be talking about the Beckwin story, the latest book, because this is where it has all been revealed in. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please, by the love of the Emperor of Mankind, leave this video right now. So the King in Yellow, the Yellow King, has been one of the main, well I say a main character, he's been he's been in the background through most of the books. Um, Eisenhorn is hunting him, there's certain Xenos factions that are hunting him, Chaos are hunting him, is this mysterious figure that we absolutely do not not know about and he's always been in the background kind of as the puppet master I would say but just 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 far enough away where we just don't know what the hell it is it's this mysterious figure and in the latest Beckwin book we actually get the reveal identity of this person and I don't say this lightly this is absolutely massive because the goal of the Yellow King is to gain the real name of the Emperor and therefore have power over the Emperor. In the search for the Emperor's true name, it's led him to the planet of the Sorcerers, to Sicarius, the Black Libra. And this is why Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn has vowed to find and destroy this Yellow King, because he could bring harm upon the Emperor, potentially. Now you're probably saying, will you just stop baiting me, Valrak? Just give me the name of the Yellow King. Now hopefully you're all sat down for this, because this is big. This is huge. So the identity of the King in Yellow has been confirmed as none other than Constantine Valdor. Yes, you heard me right. I'm going to say it again. The King in Yellow is none other than Constantine Valdor. Now, Valdor is not actually in the book per se, but it's revealed that it is Constantine Valdor as the King in Yellow through a book that is translated. Like this book has thousands and thousands of characters in it, and the first translated two words are Constantine Valdor. And the implication is, of course, that the custodian's names are that long. That's what takes the rest of the book up. So it's all Valdor's other names. But the first name in there is Constantine Valdor. But hang on, because it gets even more juicier than that. So for those of you who know Constantine's story, he survived the Siege of Terror, but he vanished after the Siege of Terror. Now, there is a short story by Chris Ray. I think it's called The Twin Blades, if I'm not mistaken, which is in relation to Constantine's spear and Lehman Russ's spear. So when Lehman Russ disappeared, this is the time that Constantine disappeared. And the theory is like the spear have like this psychic connection because they were both forged at the same time by the Emperor themselves. Like the Emperor gave one spear to Valdor and he gave one spear to Lehman Russ. So when Lehman Russ went missing, so did Valdor. And myself and a lot of people theorize that Valdor went to find Lehman Russ or he went with Lehman Russ somewhere to do something. But the information we have in this book, and I have to give a shout out to my friend VR over on Discord, because without him, this video would not be possible. He gives us the story of what Valdor's been doing. So he says, Constantine Valdor is still alive. He's been building a clone army of blanks in a pocket dimension. He's also created good demons called Grails, so that's spelled G-R-A-E-L-S, so hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he says, from what he can gather, human souls bound in the warp, where demon hosts are the warp bound into human bodies. He might potentially still have a host of custodians with him. Um, he says there's also angels mentioned in the book. One, Comus, is a blood angel with actual wings. I'm not even going to go down the theory road that that is kind of linked to Sanguinius in some type of way because this book is already exploding my mind in so many bloody areas. Because what does this mean now for the law? 
What does it mean? If Constantine Valdor comes back with an army of blanks and his goal is to get the true name of the Emperor, does that make him an enemy of the throne now? Or does that make him a good guy? I literally have no idea where they can go with this. I've always visualized and pictureized Valdor as the good guy. He is sworn to the Emperor. He is loyal to the Emperor. Maybe he's like trying to get the Emperor's true name so he can have power over the Emperor to actually help him off the Golden Throne and get him back into, you know, uh, reality again. I, I, I literally have no idea what this could mean. This is the second Beckwin book in the Beckwin trilogy. And of course, Dan Abnett left it on a cliffhanger like this. So um, we're all waiting for the last and final book of that. Uh, Beckwin and to round this story up but I think now that this is going to have wider consequences out in the general law do I think Valdo will come back as a model I really really hope so um do I think he's a heretic no I don't think he's a heretic I think he's doing this for the good of the Imperium but the way that they do that is probably um opposite to the Inquisition the problem is with the Inquisition is that it's their way or the highway and with Valdor, since Valdor was probably the closest to the Emperor beside Malkador, Valdor's doing it the way that he sees that the Emperor would want this to be done, while the Inquisition are doing it their way because it's for the good of the Imperium slash the Emperor in their own mindset. If you haven't read any of the Valdor stuff, I would beg you to please go and pick it up. Chris Raitt does a book called Thirst of the Imperium, which is all about Valdor, actually right before the Great Well, it's not before the Great Crusade, it's just at the end of the Unification Wars, and we get to see a glimpse of Valdor and his thoughts and his thinking, but he's still that mysterious figure. Don't forget, the Emperor marched his entire armies across the planet just to acquire Valdor. Like, the Emperor nearly lost everything just to acquire Valdor. So Valdor, in some type of way, is special. He is a special, special being. And hopefully, in this book, it gets revealed why... Uh, sorry, the, well, well, in this series, hopefully, it gets revealed why he's such that special being and why the Emperor, more or less, nearly gave everything to acquire Valdor. All right, Chaperunios, that is me done for another video. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Um, what do you feel about this? What do you feel about um, the potential of a Valdor return? Maybe a Valdor model? Oh my god, holy emperor. I don't even want to think about that because I'll probably cream in my pants. Um, this, again, this has ripple waves. This this, this has waves in the general law now, um, which could really start shaking the boat. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see it. Um, hopefully, you know, Rebute learns of this and all the other things that are attached to it. This could be absolutely fantastic. But of course, I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down below and we'll have a nice little talk down there as we always do. See you now, have a great day and bye-bye.